Hey, this is Derek Jordan. Welcome to the World Fusion Show, where we bring you the leading innovators in world fusion music. Today, my guest is Jacob Edgar, and he is a, has been a major force in the world fusion movement and in world music for many years. He works with Putumayo and also has his own world music record company, Kumbancha Records. Welcome, Jacob Edgar, to the World Fusion Show. It's a pleasure to be here, Derek. It is so great to have you. And, you know, you're, you're like, you know, one of the guys. You've been doing this forever. And it's so great to get you and your history, perspective, everything. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. You know, we're, we're taping this on election day, so uh, we're all a little stressed out right now about the future of our world. But um, I have confidence that in the long run, everything's going to work out and uh, we'll all be part of one beautiful family as we should be. Thank you. I feel the same way. It's great to have you on this auspicious day. <laughs> anyway, so I'd, I'd love to start, you know, you started as a musician and got went to school for music and all that. You're no longer, I guess, p performing, but you've gotten into so much music and you've been able to share so much with the world of music you've discovered all over the planet. But first, tell us a little bit about how you got into music to start with. Well, I, uh, I grew up in, uh, I was born in San Francisco, a child of the, of the 60s, born in 1969. My parents were San Francisco hippies and artists. And in the late 70s, they decided to relocate to Vermont, which is where I spent the rest of my childhood. Uh, and I just grew up in an artistic environment. My parents had a great record collection. I heard a lot of African music, Bob Marley, uh, you know, classic blues, all kinds of stuff that uh, a lot of people aren't as lucky as I was to have uh, in their collections growing up. And I started playing music myself. I played trumpet uh, starting in fifth grade. And then in high school, I discovered that the gu guitar was a great way to, to meet girls. So I started playing guitar and just performing and singing and, and being very involved with music. But I was also very interested in, in travel. I was interested in the world, seeing what was going on out there uh, in the planet. I was a, a foreign exchange student in high school. I lived in Iceland for a year. I traveled to the Soviet Union in the late 80s, back when it was still the Soviet Union, on a musical exchange program. Uh, I, I backpacked across Europe. I did all kinds of things, even before I went to college, just to expose myself to, to the world. And I discovered that music was the perfect way to connect with people when I was traveling. So I would perform in the streets and play music to make money, but also to meet people. And uh, I would get invited into homes and we would make music together or talk about the music that we loved. And I learned so much about the places that I visited through their music. I learned about their language, their history, their identity, what, what, really, what things really meant to them. Their music kind of embodied that. So when I went to college, I went to Oberlin College in Ohio, which also has a fantastic music school, and I just immersed myself in, in history and language and music and uh, started playing in salsa bands, trumpet in salsa bands in the local steel town. Lorraine, Ohio is a, uh, is a steel town. It's a you know, big steel factory, uh, industrial Midwest, and in the 1950s, they brought in a lot of Puerto Rican uh, immigrants, well, not immigrants, Puerto Rican native, uh, natives of the U.S., to work in the steel plant. And it ended up that Lorraine, Ohio, this, this funky uh, rundown city in northern Ohio, had one of the largest per capita Puerto Rican populations in the United States. And so I started playing with the local salsa bands. They're always looking for trumpet players and just really got into it and, and really started to enjoy the music and make a connection with the community. I ended up traveling to Latin America after that. And took ethnomusicology classes and discovered my love, my love for this field that ties all of this together from music to history, to travel, to culture. And um, once I knew that that existed, I, I never looked back. <laughs> what a fantastic story. It's so great. What a journey you've had. Now, I'd love to talk a little bit about your work with Putumayo. And we're going to go to this video of an artist from Putumayo named Ari. So tell us briefly about your connection to them. Well, you know, my job with Putumayo is to 
travel the world and find exceptional songs. That's that's really uh, kind of a dream job, as you can imagine. I've been doing it since 1998. You see behind me some of the fruits of that effort. It's a very, very small portion of uh, the music that I've collected over the years. And, you know, Putumayo's motto is guaranteed to make you feel good. We, we try to bring music to people with a very positive image, a positive message. And uh, this song just embodies that, that mission. It sure does. Let's go to the video. Es vida de goce, vida maria. back with Jacob Bender. That is a great, she's great. I've never heard her. She's wonderful. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I have a particular affinity for the music of, uh, for Afro-Portuguese music, so music from Cape Verde, from Angola, yeah. Guinea-Bissau. Yeah. Uh, it's just an example of the way and diff- ways in which different cultures uh, can come together. You know, you have the Portuguese, European culture, the African cultures, and then a mix of Brazilian flavor. Yeah. And that video really embodies that that kind of cross-generational spirit, too. We love music that's great for, for kids and sends yeah. a positive message. And, and yeah. that's really what that song's about. And you can dance to it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so you have your own record label now, Kumbancha Records, yeah. where you present many, many artists from around the world. I wanted to go to our next video where we share three of your male artists, for starters. Okay. Can we do that? Of course, take your pick. Let's do it. Okay, here we go.
que comme je l'ai toujours dit, il faut aimer quelque chose pour le faire. Même en matière de musique, si tu n'aimes pas de musicien, tu ne pourras pas jouer avec lui. Il n'y a pas ni chrétien, ni juif, ni musulman. Il n'y a pas de limite. Euh, qui, nous a, qui, qui a envoyé ça pour nous. All right, we are back with Jacob Edgar. Boy, that's so great. Just great stuff you've been finding and great musicians. Yeah, it just makes me smile looking at those videos. A lot of great memories. Ooh, I bet, I bet. No, for sure. Now I want to go to also just to share with our audience some of the female artists that you represent on Kumbancha. Do you want to say anything about these people? Well, uh, who, do, who do you have queued up? Who we have you... uh, Raza Saeed, uh, Chiwaniso, and Rupa and the April Fishes. Okay, so Razia is from Madagascar. Yeah. Uh, I met her in New York City, where she lived for many, many years, and she was part of what I call my Kumbancha Discovery Series, which was a line I started to introduce people to, to previously unknown artists. Yeah. Uh, and she has a very strong focus on the environment and, uh, you know, kind of improving the situation with deforestation in Madagascar. Chiwoniso, who sadly passed away uh, a few years ago, really oh. young, 36 years old, was one of the great voices from Zimbabwe. Uh, she, she was raised in the U.S., but her parents were... Uh, one of the premier uh, the premier teachers of traditional Zimbabwean uh, Mbira music. And she grew up in a very, very musical family, an incredible voice. Mm. And then Rupa is from San Francisco. Uh, by day, she's a doctor. By night, she's a musician. And <laughs> she's a very outspoken and uh, incredible human being. And uh, she's just uh, an amazing artist as well. Well, I agree. All three are fantastic. Let's go to the videos now. Zinki zao, zao mbola heli Manira no karama swandini Rahadia bivita na ufo Ana wende karare niku Na hefa niteza zan kamaru Chazau no kul kulu inau na hefan kara kara nai na no me fanjena na piang tara tara izeni mu ani fiena ku eno ni fiena na ti do doria vairek fuati karu. Oh, mama, mama, 
Great stuff. And I have a special place in my heart for music from Madagascar. I have to yeah. say, um, one of my favorite artists is a guitarist, I'm sure you know, Gary, who's of course. wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. He's worked with Rossi. He's fantastic. He's, yeah. he's genius, really, I think. Yeah. Amazing person. Amazing player. Now, you also do travel log work with National Geographic. and right. And and uh, Music Voyager program. So we're going to go to some of that just to give people, you know, that aspect of your work. You want to say something about that work you're doing? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, both Music Voyager, which is a, a PBS broadcast TV series on music and, and travel, and the work that I've been doing with National Geographic Travel and Lindblad Expeditions have been an effort to try to put some more context into the music. You know, I think uh, a lot of people, we listen to music completely out of its natural context, but it's so important to see and experience where the music is from. If you, if you can do it in person through our trips, uh, it's wonderful. And I've been really blessed to be able to travel all over the world with, uh, with National Geographic and Lindblad Expeditions and show people firsthand uh, some of these artists in amazing locations or through the, the TV series where people can get a, a bit of a, a sense of the roots of this music and, and the environment uh, that it comes out of and the stories behind the people that make it. Yeah, that's fantastic. Let's go to the video right now. Thanks. Hi, everybody. I'm Jacob Edgar, and I'm speaking to you from Vermont, where social isolation is a way of life. I'm an ethnomusicologist, which means I explore the world through music. I let music reveal the secrets of the histories, the cultures, the traditions, the languages, and the people of the destinations that we visit. Now, since we can't travel together right now, I've reached out to musicians who have performed for Lindblad Expeditions in the past and hopefully will perform for us again in the near future. 
and have invited them to take part in what we're calling the Virtual Music Lounge. So every Thursday in April at 4 p.m. New York City time, a musician from around the world will be performing live on Lindblad's Facebook page. I've invited musicians from Scotland and Ireland, from Rapa Nui down in the Pacific, from Trinidad, from all different parts of the world to come and join us in the Virtual Music Lounge. And I, I hope we'll see you there too. And I hope to see you again on a future Lindblad expedition so we can make some beautiful music together. Heartbeat of Peru can be felt in Lima, the thriving and cosmopolitan capital of this diverse South American country. The cuisine, the art, the lifestyle reflect a new vision of Lima's future. Here, there's a rhythm, a beat, a creative spirit that keeps the city speeding ahead. While groundbreaking chefs, artists, musicians, athletes, and others are looking beyond their borders for inspiration. They also draw heavily from local tradition, history, and heritage. Young Peruvians are using a vibrant palette of colors to paint a modern image of this massive city. I'm hitting the streets to feel the city's pulse and divine a sense of what the future holds for Lima, Peru. Yes, yes, we are back with Jacob Edgar. It's so great what you're doing, really bringing the world to us through these, and culture, music and culture, through your travels and through the shows. It's really fantastic. Now. I wanted to, I thought you'd be the perfect guy to ask this question to, because occasionally we talk about this concept of cultural appropriation. And sure. I just wanted to know if you could give us, you know, what your feelings are about that. You know, I, I think obviously it's a complicated issue and um, something that, that's, that's really relevant these days in, in this globalized world when it's kind of the way in which we're exposed to music can be so, it's so easy to be exposed to music from different parts of the world and, and so easy to borrow from things. Um, I mean, the reality is that the music that we listen to today, every form of music that we listen to today is, is the result of cultural appropriation from one side of, uh, or another, from, you know, one culture to another. It's, it's the part of what makes our music so interesting and so special. Um, you know, all popular American music comes from this, this interaction between cultures. I think the issue is really the power dynamic between those cultures and when, uh, or the economic dynamic between those cultures. When you approach this music from a place of respect and appreciation and education, uh, I think that is, is very important. Um, and obviously, of course, you want to make sure that the musicians who uh, inspire you or, or lead to these uh, new creations are both recognized and compensated for the the offer the the, the contribution that they've made, you know I, I think it's a um, it really comes down to equality and in a world where uh, we don't have uh, wealthy people or privileged people taking advantage of of poorer people or less privileged people, uh, that's ultimately what we're all hoping for and all shooting for. And I do believe that music is one of the tools that will lead to that because music is something that that opens our our eyes our hearts and of course our ears to people that are different from us and it's only through appreciating that difference and and celebrating that difference uh, that these power dynamics can be changed fantastic thank you so much i really appreciate that statement and you know it's it's just great to for you to share that from your unique and vast experience with world music. I mean, yeah. it means a lot coming from you, I think, to say that, and I think our audience will really appreciate that. So, Jacob Edgar, I just want to say thank you so much 
for coming and joining us today on the show, sharing your music, your philosophy, your ideas, all the great work that you've been doing in sharing world music with everyone, all of us. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. And you too. I, I, like, to, I like to tell people that uh, Vermont is the Motown of world music, and <laughs> you're part of that. So thank you very much for, for keeping this an unusual and unexpected epicenter for global culture. Thank you. It's Hitsville over here in Brattleboro, Vermont with this, and in Charlotte, where you are in Charlotte, Vermont, also Hitsville up there as well. Thanks so much again for joining us. Thank you. All right, cool. All right, hey, this is Derek Jordan. Thank you for joining us today on the World Fusion Show. It's been great to have you. We have lots of great shows coming, lots of fantastic guests coming up. I just want to say, hey, join us on Facebook, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, share with your friends. Let's keep spreading this World Fusion thing far and wide. And I want to say uh, thank you to our f wonderful sponsors, McKenzie, Family Charitable Trust, Dean's Beans, Chris Pratt, Nancy Feinberg, Ron Dans, and Jeff Green. And you know, as we like to say on the show, remember, think globally, listen locally, and support independent music.